People, it's 2015 and I feel old. Why do I feel old? I feel old because the first ever design studio I got into was Nissan with our friend Randy Rodriguez and it was this car way back in 2009. It's 2015 now, which makes that car old, like me. Um, but we love this car, so we need to come and revisit it, especially when they give us a new Nismo version. So let's go through some of the changes and revisit with an old friend. I think we should start with a point that actually confuses me on these cars. So the Nismos, they have uh, not much more horsepower than the base Z. So this one's got 350 horsepower that comes in at uh, 7,400 RPM. And then uh, the torque is 276, comes in at 5,200 RPM, and that's only six more than uh, the base Z. But some of the other pieces are a little bit more important here to the changes from base to Nismo. And I think the biggest one here is this strut tower brace. This thing is not just between the two strut towers, it's the strut towers back to the firewall and back out to the other strut towers. So you're getting kind of like a double structural dose of energy to the frame to make this thing significantly stiff. 17 horsepower? Really? 17 measly horsepower is all you can give me? I mean, this is the biggest, baddest Nismo Z out there. And all you can give me is 17 horsepower. The issue is more society than it is the car itself, because 350 horsepower is really nothing to sneeze at, especially a car like this. Let's go through some turns. It's never going to embarrass you. So here's the problem. Sitting next to this car in a Nissan showroom is an Altima. But it's not the Altima that's the problem. It's the fact that that Altima, you could get almost 300 horsepower in an Altima now. An Altima! So when you say the biggest bad is Z, has 350 horsepower, eh, it's, it just doesn't sound good. Friends, you and I have been talking about cars for a number of years now, and one thing I never like to do is tell you what you already can see, uh, but I can chart some changes here. The front end is probably the biggest change in Nismo 14 to Nismo 15. So much so that in the time I've been driving this vehicle, I've had a number of people that are not Z people come up to me and say, man, that is a cool looking car, what is it? I would say that's because of the front end. I'd also say, and with all due respect to the people that own Nismo Zs 14 and older, I think last year's car, the front end was kind of goofy looking. I think this front end solves that by a long margin. Uh, one of the other big changes here, which I love, is the wheels. This is, I think, coming from our friend Randy here. Um, while they are the, a totally different design, the size is the same. They're 19 inches, and they are fulfilled by the same company, our friends at Ray's Engineering. There are two other changes in the back. The rear spoiler, notice it's a lot smaller, but it actually provides a bit more downforce. And one of the interesting things I found out about it, even though it's smaller, it's, it's such a change that it, it had to completely redesign the way the entire lift gate seats into the actual structure of the car. The other change that's back there is like all Nismo Zs, it's got a viscous limited slip differential. So I've had the good fortune of driving this particular Nismo Z for a couple of weeks. And if you've been following the show for a while, you know we've driven a lot of Z's because Randy Rodriguez is a good friend of ours. So I, I feel like I know this car a bit more than I know other vehicles. And in previous Nismos, I've always felt that the car is about the closest that most OEMs until the Alpha 4C has come to a Lotus Elise. Granted, this is a heavier vehicle, it's over 3,000 pounds, so you don't get the same driving dynamics, but it's the kind of driving dynamics that, that I feel are religion. It's, it corners completely flat, it's much more engaging, but I think the best way to describe this vehicle is it's analog. And let me give you an example. Everyone, including your grandmother, knows about the Nissan GTR. It's fast, it's capable, but everyone says something about, oh, well, the computer controls everything, or it's not my kind of a car, or I want to be able to drive the car and control the car a bit more. Well, that's what this vehicle is. 
So when I say analog, it's more about everything that the GTR is, this car isn't. It's beautifully balanced. Um, and that's a big function of some of the Nismo bits here. And it makes for this car just so much more engaging. But again, the only word that I can come up with is analog. Get me? And yes, there are a couple of changes on the interior. Like if you look on the dash, there is a screen now. Previous Nismos, you could not get the navigation system. So here you can get what's called the tech package. Now, if you're a Nismo or Nissan Z freak, you know that there is a sport and there is a tech package on the uh, base Z that gives you the navigation. It gives you power seats and it gives you heated seats. Uh, in this one, it does not give you powered seats. It does not give you, sadly, heated seats. And I've had this car over the Christmas holiday, and it has been like Ice Station Zebra here in the California Republic. So I know you people in Minnesota are saying, don't cry for me, Argentina, but I digress. Another thing that's odd about this from the tech package and the sport, the brakes are shared with this one. So basically, if you opt for a Nissan 370Z and get the sport or the tech, you get the 14-inch rotors in the front and the 13-inch rotors in the back. That's the same deal here, so they call them like the Nissan Sport brakes. But again, I digress. The biggest change here is the Recaro seats. So the Recaros, they're all fine and good, but the first couple of minutes I'm in this 15 Nismo Z, there's something different about the interior, almost as if it felt bigger. And I'm looking at the design, I'm thinking maybe Randy changed something, but that wasn't the case. And then I look over down here and I notice, oh, have you guys ever noticed that in a standard Z, even a Nismo from last year, the seat padding is actually very thick compared to other cars. So here you've got this new Recaro seat and it's a racing seat. So like all racing seats, it has a much thinner set of padding that's in it. Um, and you can see that here. Look at the, the seat bottom on this side. It's the standard seat bottom, but over here, you get this totally Recaro, well, it's not Recaro-esque, it's full-on Recaro seat on this side. And yeah, I've got the proper seating position here where I still have a bend in my arm, bend in my knee so I can control things. But the seat back itself, is more scooped out. So I feel as if my torso is farther away from the dashboard, which gives me the illusion of a bigger interior. Holy sh! There's donkeys walking across the road. Can you guys see it? I'm gonna take the camera off because you guys have got to see this. There's donkeys. Look at this. Donkeys just walking across the road. See that? Hi guys. What are you doing? <laughs> um, <laughs> there's, there's donkeys walking across the road. I know I'm repeating myself here. Even the guy at the NSX was like, there's a donkey walking across the road. Hi buddy. What are you doing? So before we sum this all up, there's one piece of information I forgot to share with you guys, and that is uh, I hate the clutch on this generation of Zs. Uh, I don't care if it's the Nismo, the Roadster, the Base, it's just there's something not right with the clutches on these cars. And a funny thing happened, while we've had this one here, a couple of the members of the crew, they got to drive this car, and completely unsolicited came back, had the same exact complaint. But I digress. So what do we have here? We have a car in driving dynamics, off the charts. I've always loved the way the Nismo Z drives because it's very close to my religion of Lotus. But we have a car, I mean, man, this is the biggest bad Z out there. This should have more power. And it's not that this is underpowered, it's just we're living in a time when there's 650 and 700 horsepower cars out there, so it kind of makes you forget that there's a Z Nismo out there. I mean, think about this for a minute. For not that much more money, you can buy a Corvette that has 105 more horsepower than this. 
And then if you do some research just on Zs, there are guys ripping Titan V8s out of pickup trucks, ripping the V6 out of this, dropping the V8 in this thing, and going drifting. Uh, then, you know, our friend Steve Millen, he rips out the V6, puts a turbo on it, puts it back in, 500 horsepower, and then you still go drifting with this thing. Um, but that's my thought. I think it should have more power. What do you guys think? Is this enough power? Or what power would make you think about the Z again? What power would get you to the point where, you know what, forget the other cars, I want this one. Let me know in the comments below or via our social networks, Motoman TV, all one word, Motoman TV, all one word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I'll see you guys next time. So here's the script. Click here to subscribe. Click here to watch one of our 350 other episodes. And most importantly, share us with your friends. You're already wasting half your life on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Moto Man TV, all one word. I don't care who you share us with. Share us with your enemies. Just give the gift of Moto Man.